With news like this coming out of the Koreas, you have to sometimes wonder if either side is serious about de-escalating the situation. Plus five police officers are murdered in the tumultuous Xinjiang region of China, and Australia's new prime minister says he has concerns about asylum camps, but offers up nothing new. These stories are coming up next. This is the Asia Brief. Hello everyone, great to have you with me here on this beautiful Thursday, September 24th, 2015. Of course, my name is Steve Miller. Now, this is the last standalone version of the Asia Brief this week, so let's go ahead and kick things off with news from the Korean Peninsula. In 2013, the world went ballistic. Huh? You see what I did there? They went ballistic when Kim Jong-un pulled his shenanigans. After the landmine incident, we saw tensions rise again on the peninsula, only to be deflated by marathon negotiations. Pyongyang milked the resulting lull for all it was worth and then issued new statements announcing a planned rocket launch and possible nuclear test to coincide with the 70th anniversary of the Workers' Party. Now, South Korea wants to join the party with a pair of its own announcements to play into North Korea's narrative that Seoul is planning an invasion and will surely elicit some bellicose verbiage from the DPRK. First, an official from the Army's Special Warfare Command announced in Parliament the military is seeking to organize a special unit for the purpose of hitting the enemy's strategically core targets, namely attacking and destroying North Korea's nuclear and missile arsenals as well as other high-value targets. Now, the creation of a unit is a good idea. A targeted response team designed to take out the most serious threats is what absolutely needs to be done. But announcing it in the manner in which the army did plays right into North Korea's public relations spin because this is a team specifically designed to go into North Korea and take out targets. It simply gives Pyongyang fodder to fuel their rhetoric. It was also announced that Seoul would beef up its production of small, unmanned drones to better spy on North Korea's military activities along the land and sea borders. The Defense Acquisition Program Administration said these drones, which measure 1.4 meters by 1.8 meters and have a flight time of about an hour, will greatly improve infantry battalion's combat power. Again, a very useful and viable technology needed to protect one's border areas but framed in a manner that opens up the door for North Korea to promote its invasion narrative all too easily. Most likely, Seoul made these public announcements as a response to Pyongyang's launch statement, but North Korea isn't sitting idly by and increased patrols along the northern limit line, the de facto maritime border to the west. That area has seen a number of skirmishes over the years, including the sinking of the Chonan in 2010, which claimed the lives of 46 South Korean sailors. Sadly, the perpetual cycle of tension is about to resume and reach new heights once October rolls around. Reports have surfaced that at least five police officers have been stabbed to death by suspected separatists in a knife attack at a coal mine in China's Xinjiang region. The incident occurred last Friday at the Sogon Colliery in Aksu, according to Radio Free Asia, citing police in the area. In addition to the five police officers killed, dozens more were injured. The attack was a long-planned, well-prepared, large-scale attack by separatists against police officers and mine owners at a coal field in our country, a government notice read. This is the latest stretch of violence in the region, home to Uyghur Muslims who say they are being persecuted by the Han Chinese majority. Over the past year or so, there have been a number of deadly bombings and attacks, and unfortunately, they don't show any sign of letting up. Now, don't forget, the Bangkok bombing has been linked to groups sympathetic to Uyghurs and carried out in retaliation against Thailand for repatriating refugees, or as China refers to them, as either separatists or terrorists. Australia's new Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull, said he has concerns about asylum seekers being held in the nation's Pacific Island camps, but gave no indication that he changed the administration's hardline policy. The Prime Minister said in an interview with Sky News, 
I understand the issue. I have the same concerns about it, about the situation of people on Manus and Nauru, as I would think almost all Australians do. But what I am not going to do is make changes to our border protection policy while conducting this interview. Our policies will change. All policies change. But when we do make changes, we will do so in a considered way, and they will be made by the minister, myself, and the cabinet. We are not going to make, not me or any minister, we are not going to make any policy changes on the run. Rights groups and refugee advocates claim asylum seekers are subject to indefinite detention in inadequate conditions with particular concerns about the safety of children. That, as they say, is that, and this podcast is now coming to a close. But if you have a thought or an opinion on any of the stories in today's podcast, I'd love to hear from you. So please leave a comment, respond via Facebook or Twitter, or if you're so inclined, record yourself and send in an audio response. The Asia Brief is a special feature of the Asia News Weekly Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, please share it with your friends, and if you haven't, subscribe. Subscribing is free, and when you do, the next episode is delivered automatically to you. You can subscribe on our website, asianewsweekly.net, or in your favorite podcast application. You can also keep up with more news from the region by following Asia News Weekly on Facebook or Twitter. And if you have any comments, questions, or feedback, be sure to drop us a line. That email address is podcast at asianewsweekly.net. Thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, remember to be true to yourself and to always be awesome.